What is going on everybody? Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So the markets had a pretty good day today. The S&P and the Russell went up 0.3%. The NASDAQ 100 went up 0.7% as the Dow Jones broke even. So today, like always, we're going to break down some stocks, some charts, my thoughts on the markets, plus more. So sit back, relax, hit the like button, check out my Patreon down below if you want all my real-time buy, sells, call-outs, morning update videos, plus more. All of that's on Patreon. Again, link down below. And with that being said, let's get right into the video. So the markets, as you all know at this point, have been crushing it the past couple of days. And SPY, which tracks the S&P 500, is well on its way to filling the gap up to that all-time high from the beginning of September, which is right around 454.50. In fact, we got a dollar short of that today. We closed at 453.50 and we are down a little bit after market hours as you guys can see here on the intraday chart. We had a very big run in power hour. We hit that 453.80 mark and now we're giving back some of those gains but still overall on the intraday chart we're holding an uptrend and we're a stone's throw away from that all time high which I've been on record saying I wouldn't be surprised if it were to hit this week talking about this week that we're currently in so tomorrow being friday there's still a chance that we actually hit that all-time high and uh I, I feel like quite honestly guys if we do break that point or at least uh start to gain momentum out of there we're probably going to go 460, maybe even higher than that. We're going to see a breakout from this point. Um, and at that point, we're going to be at fresh all-time highs. So that's what I'm expecting. Maybe not tomorrow. Sure, could happen tomorrow. Uh, but definitely next week or the week after, I think we are going to see some momentum um, into the high 450s. I could be wrong. I've been wrong before. Uh, but that's kind of what I'm seeing here based on my analysis and the way I'm seeing things um, so Set up and let's pull up QQQ. Let's see what's going on over there. QQQ is looking pretty good, guys. This was battling with 375 for the past two, three trading days, which was resistance from the end of September. And you guys can uh, clearly see we closed at 377 today. We had a 0.6% green day, and uh, the stock, or not the stock, in this case, the ETF. Um, it broke out of 375, 376, which is good. And uh, now we're pulling back a bit. You guys can see the aggressive pullback in the aftermarket hours. So we close at 377.20. Now we're trading right back down to 375. So for tomorrow being Friday, I want to see what we do at 375. Do we consolidate for the next couple of days um, or maybe even just tomorrow? Do we end up holding 375 and ripping up pre-market into market open? Or do we end up collapsing under 375? That's kind of what I'm watching for as, again, this has been um, a sticking point for QQQ the past couple of days and about a month ago as well. So we got to break out of that point or at least maintain it and start pushing up to 380 so what do you guys think drop me a comment down below make sure to smash the like button as always if you guys find value in my videos i really do appreciate each and every one of you guys out there and uh now we got to talk stocks because a lot of the stocks that we're going to go over today well mostly two of them um two of the seven are moving down pretty aggressively right now and uh, one of them I already own. So let's go over Intel, which full disclosure is the one that I own. And this is more of a mid term swing for me, mid to long term swing. Um, I bought it. When, when did I buy it? Yesterday, I believe. Yeah, yesterday I bought it and I sold the $57 calls that expire tomorrow, which I should make um, well, I should keep my shares considering there's no way in heck it's going 57 because now it's at 52 after hours. So let's talk a little bit about that. They did EPS, adjusted EPS of $1.71 versus the $1.11 estimated. So they crushed adjusted EPS and revenue missed. Revenue came in at $18.1 billion versus $18.24 billion. So they missed revenue by a little bit. 
crushed adjusted EPS, and the stock is taking a beating. It closed at 56. Now it's trading at 52 bucks. And again, I sold the 57 calls um, that, that expire tomorrow. Um, and if you guys don't know how that works, well, go watch my video on how it works. I mean, uh, go, on the, go on the search and type in Stasser Fest covered calls. But in a nutshell here, if Intel goes 57 or more in terms of per share value, I have my shares called away, but if it closes under 57 tomorrow, which it probably will considering it's at 52 now, I keep my shares and I'll be able to write contracts for the next week or or whenever I please for that matter um, in the following couple of weeks. So that, that was my plan anyway. You know, I bought Intel yesterday, not trying to make a quick buck. This is actually a stock that I believe is a bit undervalued. It's very beaten down from the $68 high from mid-April. Now we're clearly down about, what, 20 plus percent from mid-April, 25% uh, almost. So this is a stock that I want to hold and just simply... Maybe do the wheel strategy on it or, or sell covered calls and just hold on to it because I think it's uh, it's undervalued and yeah, I want to take advantage of the uh, the option premiums here by selling covered calls against it. So at this point, Intel, if I clear the drawing set, we are actually testing the support after hours here at about 52 bucks, which you guys can clearly see 52 has been support since the middle towards the end of July. We've actually held it countless of times since the middle towards the end of July. Once here, twice, three, four, five, and now it's six times. So at this point, guys, if it goes lower, I might consider adding more to my position. Um, even if it consolidates, I'm still going to hold on to it again and uh, sell calls against it. So I'm not sure why it's selling off so aggressively. Maybe it's uh, guidance. Let's see here. Um, they expect Q4 non-gap revenue of $18.3 billion and non-gap EPS of $0.9, um, well, 90 cents versus the street estimate of 18.25 billion. So their guidance for the next quarter for revenue is above the estimate, but for EPS, they guided 90 cents, but the estimate from the street is a dollar two. So maybe that is why um, they're falling a bit. EPS guidance is low. And revenue missed in terms of this current quarter or past quarter, shall I say. Um, but I'm not sweating it, guys. Intel, again, I think it's undervalued. And I'd love to know your thoughts um, down below in the comments. So let's talk about this next one, which, brace yourselves, guys. Strap the seatbelts. Get ready for this because I was not expecting it. I'm sure you guys were not expecting it. Uh, Snapchat, holy moly. This one is getting cremated right now. I don't even know what to say. It's getting destroyed, decimated, cremated. It, 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 it's just freaking destroyed. I can't. I don't know what else to say. The stock is down from 75 bucks, where it closed, mind you. It closed at 75 today. And now it's trading at $57. And it actually got a lot lower than that. It got to $52 in the aftermarket session here. And if you guys do basic math, which I can't do this math in my head, but if I use think or swim, you know, this is a, a big drop. We're talking from $75 down to $52, which is the, uh, the length of the drop here. We're talking 30%. <laughs> I can't even say that out loud without cracking myself up. Snapchat dropped 30%, guys, um, which is unbelievable. Um, they did EPS of $0.17 cents versus $0.08 cents estimated. Revenue came in at $1.07 billion versus $1.1 billion estimated. So like Intel, even though these companies are not related at all, uh, Snapchat missed revenue. But it beat EPS. Actually, it doubled up EPS. Um, 17 versus 8 cents. That's a big beat. Uh, but the stock is still down 30%. Now it's down about 25%. And I'm not exactly sure why. I have no freaking idea. Oh, wait. Scratch that. I now know why. They see Q4 sales guidance. It all comes back to guidance, guys. Q4 sales of $1.165 billion versus $1.2 billion versus the $1.36 billion estimated. So the guidance for next quarter is a lot lower than expected. That is not good. And it's, yeah, let's see what it says here. Uh, snap stock falls 
more than 25% after earnings come in light, blames Apple changes. Hmm, maybe something with the App Store, downloads. Okay, I, I mean, I guess you could throw the blame on Apple there, which I don't know if I completely agree with. Um, worse than expected, Q3 sales issued Q4 sales guidance below estimates. So, yeah, they dropped the ball. No doubt about it. The uh, upcoming quarter is not going to be the best. But is Snapchat stock now trash? I wouldn't go that far and say that. Um, I think there is going to be opportunity on this dip, whether it's tomorrow, next week, when the dust settles. I don't know, but I do believe this dip, like it seems like it, <laughs> it has every time in the past, I think this dip will ultimately be bought up. Now, am I saying it's going to go straight back to 75, 80 plus per share? No, I'm not saying that. It could in due time, but... In the short term, um, I doubt it's going to go back to 80 bucks in the snap of a finger, right? It might take a year, two years, who knows, maybe a couple months. Uh, but in the short term, could it see a relief rally? Absolutely. Could we go 60, 65? Absolutely, guys, um, which is why I'm watching it, which is why it's on the top of my watch list right now. And mind you, it's still a falling knife. Be careful. You could buy it here and it could go down to 50 and you're down seven cents or seven bucks per share, considering it's now at 57. So if it dropped to 50, do the math, you're down. So you could lose money still here. But if we see the dust settle, consolidation, a couple of days, whatever, um, this could see momentum, buyers stepping in, all that good stuff, especially now that it's oversold. And I wouldn't consider this earnings report atrocious or anything like that. Sure, the guidance wasn't great, but for it to drop 30%, I mean, I don't know if that's... Um, I don't know if that's warranted, guys. I feel like it is a bit overblown here. We'll see, though. We'll see. Again, I'd love to know your thoughts, as always, down below. Are you a Snapchat owner? Did you buy any today? Um, after hours, that is. If you bought before the market closed, uh, that sucks. It really does suck. But if you bought after, let me know down below in the comments. And now let's talk about Chipotle, which I have a love-hate relationship with. I love Chipotle, the food, but... The uh, service in my area, at least, I've talked about here on YouTube, and a lot of you guys have uh, commented down below as well. The service has been crap. The labor shortage is real. A lot of the restaurants have been closing. They're, uh, they're closed for good. Some of them are short on staff. We're talking one or two people work in the whole Chipotle, and they have to close early. You know, the three locations in my area... All of them are very short in terms of uh, operating hours. They're only open like a couple hours a day. Some of them shut down. They're closed certain days. You know, this stuff is crazy. And I was interested in seeing what Chipotle was going to report. So they actually double beat, which is nice. EPS came in at $7.02 versus $6.32 estimated. So they beat EPS and revenue also beat. Like I said, double B. Revenue came in at $1.95 billion versus $1.93 billion estimated. And I've told you guys before, and I'll say it again, I wanted Chipotle stock to crash. Uh, maybe not 20, 30% like Snapchat did, even though that would be nice. You know, that, that'd be a decent pickup in my opinion. But I want it to just come down. 10%. That's it. Is, is, is that too much to ask for, guys? I want it to come down to this 180 SMA on the yearly chart. That's it. Right around the double top high from earlier in 2021, from um, February and April. If it comes down to there, there goes Siri talking on my iWatch, guys. Um, if it comes down to there, 1600 I would be a buyer. 100%. I would be a buyer. But until then... Um, I, I'm on the sidelines for Chipotle. Um, but I do think ultimately we will get that sell off. It will fill the gap and I'll be ready for it. I'll be ready for it. That is why cash is a position. That is why you should have cash and it's all relative. Whether you want 20% cash, 50%, 5%, it's all relative to you. But I do believe everybody should have a little bit of cash in order to take advantage of opportunities like Chipotle or Snapchat or Intel or any other stock out there for that matter. Not telling you guys what to buy, but I'm just giving you guys some insight. You know, cash, don't let anybody tell you cash is not a position because it is. So watch out for Chipotle. Um, Sam, let's talk a little bit about Boston Beer Company. This is one that you guys in my Patreon know I bought. 
I bought about, I forget exactly what day I bought it, but I bought it a couple weeks ago at about 520 bucks, and this is meant to be a longer term swing, right? This stock has been obliterated. I don't know what else to say. It's down so much. It makes Snapchat's drop look like peanuts because this one is down from 1350 to now $500, meaning it is down 65% over the past couple of months. And that makes Snapchat's 20-25% drop, like I said, look like absolute peanuts. And they reported today after market hours. So let's see what they did. Um, adjusted EPS came in at 297 for Q3 versus the 651 from last year. So they're losing, um, while well, they're still profitable, 297 EPS, but they're down a lot in terms of profit um, year over year. And the sales came in at 561 million versus 530 million. So they beat sales, uh, but EPS is uh, down a lot from year over year. And we're noticing full year 2022 gross margin is around 45 to 50, uh, 48%, which is pretty high. Not going to lie. That's a pretty solid um, gross margin. And it seems like that is all we're seeing here. I'm not seeing any guidance. I would love to see some guidance for this because I feel like this company needs to put out guidance. Or maybe they actually, was I reading that they slashed their guidance? Um, they might have they might have stopped giving out guidance. I'm not sure if that's this company or another company. I should remember this, but I'm forgetting off the top of my head. But what I do know for sure is um, the institutional guys out there, the big boys, They've been selling out of uh, Boston Beer Company, which is why it's down a lot. Again, like I said, 65%. So for me, this is a longer term swing. The chart on the four hour does not look good. I'll be the first to tell you. But if you pop up the year chart, actually the year chart looks like crap too. If you pop up the three year chart, it doesn't look that bad. We're actually um, fighting to hold the higher low here at about 500, right around that 180 moving average. And it seems like the uptrend's continuing as of now on this three-year chart. And let's pop up the 20-year chart. Let me see what that looks like. 20-year um, chart looks good as well. This shows you some uh, some different insight, right? A different perspective, shall I say? Uh, because look, if you saw, if you look at this chart, it went pretty parabolic over the pandemic. I mean, or even after the pandemic, um, or, or the peak of the pandemic, shall I say, from the uh, beginning of 2021 towards May 2021, it went pretty parabolic from about 300 to 1350. That is a huge run, and uh, now it's dumping. So overall. It's still holding the uptrend on the 20-year chart, three-year chart. So I'm in on this, guys. I'm in on this. I'm willing to hold for a couple of months, and I'm willing to add more to it. And as of now, again, my average position is uh, roughly 520 bucks per share, which is uh, something I post all the time on Patreon. My, my buys, sells, call-outs, all that good stuff, all you want on my uh, Patreon um, know that. So... Let's go over some other stocks here very quickly before we do wrap up this video. McDonald's looks pretty solid here. Um, they report earnings next week, I believe. Yeah, in six calendar days from now, which is what? Today's Thursday. Um, next Wednesday, I guess, is uh, McDonald's earnings report. And overall, you guys can see... This is uptrending. We're holding an uptrend channel, and we're down about eight bucks from the recent all-time high at about 249, 250. Now we're trading at 241, and I think this uptrend channel has potential to hold as it has um, over the past couple of months. So watch and see if buyers start stepping in at 242, 243 to push this thing back up, maybe 250, 251. That is where I think McDonald's could ultimately go. Um, Nike is another one that's breaking out. We covered this recently, and now it's just continuing the breakout. It had a 2.3% green day today. We're seeing an inverse head and shoulder here on the four-hour chart, clear as day. And on top of that, we're noticing the 50 is about to cross above the 180 SMA, which is very bullish. And at this point in time, the next target I do have for Nike is roughly $165, which was the high from the middle of September. If that were to break, we're probably going to go a buck 68 
followed by 170s, maybe even back to that all-time high. So this reversal on Nike is looking pretty strong. Trading above the moving averages on the four-hour, on the yearly chart, you're noticing it bounced off, held a higher low at 146. And on the three-year chart, you're also noticing it's uh, holding the uptrend. So I think Nike has some room to go. And Honeywell's another one, H-O-N. Let's pop up Honeywell. Um, if you look on this four-hour chart, Honeywell is clearly holding this channel. We uh, triple bottomed at about 215 recently, 213, and now we're moving pretty aggressively to the upside, right? We broke the 50 SMA. Now with today's 0.4% move and yesterday's move, we broke above the 180 SMA, and there's really no re uh, resistance from here up to the top of the channel. You know, I think it's uh, pretty clear blue skies from here to 230, 232, which is the top of the channel. So there is probably about eight bucks more upside here, three, three and a half percent for Honeywell, which makes it pretty attractive. Um, and if it breaks out of 230, 235, we're probably going to see another leg up in this stock, um, considering it's been pretty sideways moving over the past couple of months. So it's kind of due for a leg up, which the yearly chart, if you uh, see what I'm about to draw, look at this arrow. That might really occur, what I just drew there. Um, so keep your eyes on Honeywell, Nike, McDonald's, Boston Beer Company, Chipotle, Snapchat, Intel. And let's uh, loop back to uh, Snapchat. Let's see what, where that's trading at right now. Um Okay, 57.85. So it seems like it is stabilizing at about 55, high, mid-high 50s is where it's stabilizing. So I'm going to see if we can get a day trade on this. Uh, maybe tomorrow, the next day. We have to be patient on it. Well, the next day is Saturday. Maybe next week we'll get more price action on it. So what do you guys think? Drop me a comment down below. Make sure to smash the like button if you guys found value in this video. And check out my Patreon. If you guys want all my real-time buy, sells, call-outs, morning update videos, plus more, everything I'm doing in the markets, I post on Patreon. Patreon. That's linked down below, or you guys can go to stasurfest.com slash Patreon. Make sure to also subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the notification bell, and get all your free money down below. Your 10 bucks from Coinbase, your 30 bucks from M1 Finance, your two stocks from Weeble up to $1,600. All of that is linked down below, and that's it. I'll catch you guys in the next video. And by the way, I made a video earlier today talking about a stock I just bought today, which I didn't talk about in this video. And I also go over covered calls I sold against that stock. So check out that video. I'll pop it up here. I'll see you guys there. Thanks for watching again. As always, keep crushing the markets. Stay safe out there. Peace out.